Alright, welcome back. Let's get these bedside tables done. This is part 2 and I recommend that you watch part 1 first. Link is in the corner and description. The next step is some re-sewing for the tabletops and uh, this plank was very flat already. So I could reference the rough face to square up the edge and then I gave myself a curve with a circular saw. It doesn't need to be very deep, but it's a big help with staying on track when we sewing this 1.5 meter long board with a hand saw. It takes a while, but eventually I pop through. One of the resulting boards then gets cut up into four short pieces to be glued into two panels. This is a good place to mention that the tables are going to be painted. If they would get a clear finish I absolutely would have bookmatched these panels, but since the grain won't be seen this way was more efficient on materials. I planed them flat with a scrub plane, but didn't smooth them any further at this point, I just need them flat enough to edge joint. The edges were planed on both pieces to be joined at once, this way any slight angle cancels out so you can skip checking for square. They were then glued together and set aside for now. The other half of the reason board was cut up into narrower pieces that will form a mitered frame around three sides of the panels to stabilize the tabletops. These parts were flattened all the way around creating a flat reference face, a square edge and lastly a second face coplanar with the first. One edge was left rough for now. The joinery for these frames will be a mitered mortise and tenon, giving a lot of glue surface. This first piece will get a mortise. The shooting board brings the mitre down to the knife line. The tenon piece needs a little more layout. Other than the mitre, I marked a groove along the inside edge and put the same lines on the end grain while they mark the tenon. These parts cannot be done on the shooting board, requiring instead to be cleaned up with chisels and router plane after sawing. With the adjustable square set to 50mm, I could butt up the blade against the diagonal shoulder and quickly and repeatedly mark a 50mm long tenon. Then I set up my combination plane to cut the groove, and this brings the tenon down to width at the same time. You absolutely don't need a contraption like this, you can make perfectly good grooves with just a chisel, but it is a detail that features on almost everything I build in some form or another, so for me it makes sense to have one of these. Now I could scribe the tenon location onto the mortise piece and chop it out. Another way would have been to lay out and chop the mortise before cutting the mitre, 
That might have been more proper, but I did it in this order to make the mortising a lot easier. Also, I realized that the shape of this mortise and tenon doesn't mechanically lock it in any way. It would be stronger to make it so it can only slide in one direction, but this corner is not going to be stressed that much, so I'm counting on the large glue surface here to hold it together for a long time. Time to go back to the panels. First I got rid of the scrub plane marks and any discrepancies after the glue up. One edge was done plain square, this will be where it gets glued to the frame. I knifed the width of the front piece onto this edge and squared lines across the panel. The marking gauge setting is the same as for the groove in the frame pieces. I don't always bother to make a knife wall, it often takes more time than I feel it's worth. But for really wide cross cuts like this, I do find it quite helpful to have this little track for the saw to start in. With the tongue and grooves fitting, I could glue the tops together. They function a little bit like thick drawer bottoms, being glued at the front and free floating in the grooved sides to send any wood movement out the back. The tongue and grooves also serve to hold the panels flat once this gets attached to the rest of the tables. The quick grip clamp across the back does not put pressure on any glue there, it is just to make sure the assembly is square and the shoulder lines are tight all the way. Once that was dry I placed the tables upside down on the tops to draw the shape of the front and corners. I used the template to mark where the drawer front will end up, because there is no top front rail on this design. Then I measured my overhang at a few points and connected the dots by bending my ruler to a curve. I also added a small tighter curve and flat spot to the corners. This somewhat continues the Art Nouveau visual language from the legs and the front rail carving with the long sweeping arcs that turn around sharply. Adding this corner detail was a late decision, but I'm very happy with it as I feel it ties together the upper and lower parts of the tables much better than a square corner. I cut the diagonal flat on the corner first and that gave me a good starting point for the turning saw to cut the rest of the shape. I'm sawing through both tops at once to save time and to make sure they turn out as similar as possible. With the shape done I can make a bevel on the underside to make the edge thinner and lighter in appearance. I figured out how far I could take it without cutting into the tenons at the corners and carved it out with chisel and spoke shave.
and that's the tabletops complete so I can now attach them to the rest of the structure and because of how the tops are built they can be glued down directly the upper side rails and the frame pieces in the top form a stiff beam that keeps the panels flat and the corner joints in the frame pieces tie the legs together in the front while there is no upper rail so it all works together to keep the piece strong and allow the wood to expand and contract with the tops in place i moved on to the drawers and this chunk of pine will become some quarter sawn drawer sides i removed the center which contained the pith and resawed the outer parts I then marked the center line on the resulting pieces and resort them again. I do it this way, halving it and then halving again, rather than taking one slice after the other at final thickness, because it helps even out the releasing of tension and the consequent warping. Pine is a very well behaved wood, so it's not a big issue here, but still a good practice when possible. After planing I laid out the parts on a sheet of thick reclaimed veneer. I decided since the outside of the tables will be painted, I wanted the exposed wood to be something a bit nicer, a mahogany surprise when you open the drawer. I glued these veneers on with plenty of excess all around to be trimmed after drying. Next came the fitting, and this was a long process of trial and error. Each side needs to be a very close fit, and I've always done it like this, individually taking them down to size, one shaving at a time. I'm looking for ways to remove trial and error from my work though, so next time I do a drawer, I want to try to just mark the height from the opening onto the part and take it down to that line in one go. For now though, I did it the slow way. After fitting, I made grooves for the drawer bottoms. I also need drawer fronts, and these start alive as this old 4x4. Once more, I laid out my parts to cut around the pith and major splits, and get as close as cortisone as possible. Just like the drawer sides, these pieces are fit to the openings, shaving by shaving.
The lengthwise fit is achieved the same way except it's on the shooting board. These fronts are a bit too thick for my shooting plane, so I had to rotate it and cut half the thickness at a time. With the fronts fitting, it was time for half lap dovetails, starting with a baseline. This distance is the thickness of the straight part of the leg, minus how thick I wanted the end lap to end up, so that the front sits flush once it's been shaped. I set one bar on my marking gauge to about half a millimeter less than the thickness of a drawer side. This means the side will sit slightly proud of the pins, so it can be plain flush and hopefully be a perfect fit in the opening. The risk if you make the sockets exactly as deep as the tailboard thickness is that you have to plane a little bit off to clean up the glue squeeze out and polish the sides, and then you lose your fit. I also dovetailed the back corners, these don't need to be half blind, which saves a lot of time. I then planed down the backs to sit slightly lower than the sides, so they won't cause unneeded friction. Each drawer was then dry fit to check that everything will go together as intended before I start doing the curves in the fronts. So then it's time for curves, and I began this step by scribing the thinnest point, which is the same as the thickness of the straight part of the leg. Then I could draw my shape from the same template as the front rail and drawer divider. To 
to make all four drawer fronts the same shape or close enough, I planed them across the grain with a sacrificial piece to prevent spelching. The scrub plane took care of the convex part and the concave segment could be done with a round bottom molding plane. I smoothed them with a card scraper. The next thing is gonna be some bent lamination as I need pieces for an applied bead to run around the drawer fronts. Since these tables will be painted, I picked a veneer for this lamination based purely on the thicknesses I had. Two layers of this would make for the same size bead as I had carved on the legs in the previous video. When this was dry, I planed one edge straight and sawed off a thin slice, then planed it flat again and kept doing that until I had eight beads. To attach these I had to bring out the polyurethane glue, because by now the temperature had dropped below freezing. I removed the squeeze out and planed the beads flush. and trim the ends. Then I could scribe a small mitre at the corner. I also made some short pieces, these are not bent, just a couple of layers glued flat to the same thickness as the curved bead. I marked the length, the 45 degree angles, and then cut them to size with a chisel. And yeah, these get glued across the grain on the drawer fronts. Not the best practice, but on such a short length, I'm hoping it won't be a problem. In fact, as I'm recording this narration, I've had the tables in my home for a few days, and the majority of the shrinkage has happened, and none of the beads have caused any issues. It'll be good to have these pieces at home to observe over a long time, to see if this can be a valid construction method for furniture for customers. I flushed up the bead, then began rounding them. And that's it for the drawer fronts, so it's time to make the very last component on the bedside tables, the drawer bottoms. I have a small stash of thin, mostly quarter sawn oak that I decided to use for this. After cutting them to size, I planed them flat and smooth, squared up one edge, and trued up one end on the shooting board. They are almost too wide for this, but it worked. I 
I marked the final length from groove to groove in a dry fit drawer box and trimmed the bottoms to this line. Then I could scribe the size of the groove that this needs to fit into and bevel the ends down to this line. Once again this is a cross grain cut so an off cut prevents spelching as the blade exits the workpiece. The back edge of the drawer bottom gets a slot for a screw. This is to keep it held tight against the drawer back but allow it to shrink and expand with the seasons. then it was time to glue. I'm gonna do something new here, new for me that is. I decided to glue in the drawer bottom at the same time. This ensures that the drawer gets glued up square and the bottom will also support the drawer sides when it comes to planing them later. Notice also that I don't have a groove in the drawer front. I'll just glue the edge of the bottom directly to the inside face there, saving me from having to plane the bottom thinner and create a weak spot there. That front edge is often where old drawer bottoms break due to them being thinned for a groove. I realize that there may be a reason that my method is not the traditional way, but so far it has worked very well for me and again these pieces will be in my own home so I can observe them over time and notice any problems that might occur. To plane the sides I made a slot in a piece of MDF so that the drawer is a very tight fit. This way the joints are stressed as little as possible and the entire side is supported. And I just need to plane until the sides are flush with the dovetail pins at the front and back. I really like how the ribbon figure of this mahogany came out after swimming. As the very last cut on this entire build, the back corners get a small bevel to make it easier to insert the drawing in its opening. All right, there we have it. That concludes the woodworking on these projects. Obviously they have no finish and that is because I'm going to paint these and uh, as you maybe could tell in the last few shots, it suddenly turned very, very cold here. It's heated when I'm here. It's getting up to a somewhat cozy temperature now, but it's definitely going to turn freezing in here overnight. So I don't dare to paint them. Here. Instead I'm going to bring them home and uh, paint them at home. So yeah, no finish for now, unfortunately. But I think I'm going to do a video about painting them. We'll see if I can squeeze that into this year or if it's going to slip into 2024. Um, but I think there is a video coming about that. And also there are no knobs and that is because I really want to do round knobs on this curvy design and uh, since making this bench I don't have space for my lathe anymore. I still have that lathe, it's right behind me here but I don't have space to have it set up now that I have a, a bigger bench. So I decided to order some, uh, some metal knobs instead. So that's why I've just drilled little holes for some uh, machine screws to go through there. And yeah, installing knobs is not that exciting, but I'll probably toss it into the painting video. I'm really happy with how the overall design worked out. I spent a lot of time trying to sort of fuse curves and straight lines and uh, sort of slim but still 
study and there are also some things I've done on these tables that I haven't tried before that I'm very happy with how it worked out like these beads both the carved and applied beads the serpentine drawer fronts very pleased with that the sort of alternative drawer assembly where I put the drawer bottom in at the same time as the other parts that's definitely going to be my approach to drawers from now on so yeah all in all this has been a very educational project for me and I'm super happy with the results thank you all very much for watching and uh, I'll see you soon. Bye.